Welcome, everyone. I am David Weinstein, director of the Center on Japanese Economy and Business, also known as CJEB, at Columbia Business School. On behalf of the Center, I'm delighted to welcome all of you to our webinar, Hoshino Resorts, a leader's vision to transform Japanese tourism. While I understand that many of you know about CJEB already, before we get started with today's event, I will just give a brief introduction to the center. CJEB was established in 1986 by Professor Hugh Patrick, and in July of 2019, I became the director, with Hugh staying on as chairman. Our mission at CJEB, um, excuse me, um, our mission at CJEB is to promote knowledge and understanding of Japan's economy and its business systems in an international context. We continue to pursue our mission in the world's new normal through webinars like our talk today. I'm honored to introduce our speaker today, Mr. Yoshiharu Hoshino, CEO of Hoshino Resorts Incorporated. Mr. Hoshino is the fourth generation in a family ryokan business. Ryokan are also known as Japanese inns, and he became the CEO of Hoshino Resorts Incorporated in 1991 after graduating from Cornell University with a master's degree in hotel management. Under his leadership, the company has grown to operate 46 properties in and outside of Japan with a total of five brands, including Hoshinoya, as well as a brand of upscale boutique hot spring ryokans called Kai, a premier family resort brand called Risonare, a warm and casual hotel for city tourism called Omo, and last but not least, BEB, a carefree hotel brand for millennials. In 2013, Yoshiharu Hoshino established the Real Estate Investment Trust Hoshino Resorts REIT Incorporated, listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, which is the first REIT in Japan to specialize in the tourism industry. I'm looking forward to learning not only about Mr. Hoshino's journey leading the evolution and expansion of his family business, which is over a century old, but also in more detail about his company's portfolio diversification and business decisions that led to transforming the company into a resort business management company and his path to start the real estate investment trust, Hoshino Resorts REIT. I want to also mention that we have heard great news about Hoshino Resorts from Columbia Business School students who recently visited uh, Mr. Hoshino's hotel during their international student trips to Japan. Our students considered Hoshino Resorts a destination for them to learn the ever-changing hotel industry in Japan. But now with the recent announcement that the international spectators will not be allowed to enter Japan for this summer's Olympic and Paralympic Games due to public concerns over COVID-19, I'm sure Mr. Hoshino has been busy handling the announcement's potential impact on his businesses. Before I turn it over to Mr. Hoshino, I want to take a moment to thank our corporate and individual sponsors for their generous donations. These allow us to continue to develop and deliver exceptional webinars like this one. Without any further ado, Mr. Hoshino, the floor or the Zoom session is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor. Um, I'd like to start um, explaining uh, myself first before I go into the topic uh, uh, today. Um, I'm a, a skier in Japan. I have skied many times in the United States, uh, Colorado and upstate New York, um, Vermont. Uh, but I mainly ski in, in Japan during the winter time and uh, ski uh, New Zealand and uh, Southern Hemisphere during the July and August. I was born in, and grew up in Nagano Prefecture. We sponsored the 1988 Winter, uh, 1998 Winter Olympics uh, in Japan. It's a very high altitude area, and we have a lot of snow. Um, this is uh, Asahidake. It's in Hokkaido. I'm in Hokkaido now, 
this winter has been uh, very, very difficult for the tourism industry in Japan, but it was a great winter for Japanese skiers and snowboarders uh, because uh, less crowded in, in uh, snow mountains in Japan. Uh, best uh, probably in, in the last uh, 10, 10 years. So I, I enjoy skiing and also um, working very hard during this winter time. Let me uh, introduce my uh, company. Uh, this is a, a 170 year old uh, a company is in I'm a fourth generations uh, in this family business. Our founder is here. This is a photo about uh, uh, taken around 19, probably uh, 20. And uh, uh, his son is here in, in bathing uh, uh, bath. And uh, he became this person in 70 years later. And his grandson is myself. And this is how we um, passed on to this next generations. Um, we are we used to be onsen ryokan. This is the, um, the type of uh, hotel I succeeded from my father in Karuizawa, my hometown of Karuizawa in Nagano prefecture. Onsen ryokan is a very special type of hotel. It is a theme park of a Japanese culture. It does have a, a Japanese architecture, design and cultural experience. And of course the Japanese cuisine and the natural hot spring onsen experience. And this is also a very special custom of Japan. And uh, it is so special because all Japanese people like onsen ryokan so much. And, and we do have uh, onsen areas all over Japan. And uh, that, that's why it, uh, it, it makes it so special for, for, for the tourism industry in Japan. And recently in the last, uh, I would say uh, five or 10 years, foreigners, uh, visitors from uh, all over the world, including the United States and, and China. They all come to, of course, uh, Tokyo and Kyoto and those uh, famous cities, but they visit onsen ryokans uh, outside of these cities. And uh, we have been getting a very high customer satisfactions from, from them. Um, it, it's been a very, very interesting uh, um, time for us. So I succeeded this uh, very old Onsen Ryokan in my hometown in 1991. And uh, what we did is uh, there's so many uh, real estate developments going on in 1980s. And uh, it was an economic bubble in, in Japan and so much um, new supply coming into the market. And uh, we were in a ownership and, and investment and, and operation business in, in this Onsen Ryokan, but I decided after I succeeded the business, I decided to concentrate our effort on our operations. It was not a very good time for us to um, own the properties or develop the properties. It's uh, too much risk to do that in this oversupply situation at that time. So we decided to operate the hotels and re uh, ryokans and, and resorts for the owners and, and developers in Japan. Uh, there are so many, um, properties underperforming for these owners. So they were, they started looking for the better operators to, to help them uh, uh, the, the business. So th this is why we were able to grow a business. If you don't own it, uh, you, you have a free from the um, heavy uh, balance sheet situation. You don't need to loan money from your financial institution. Uh, so we, our balance sheet was, has been very, very light. And uh, instead we have to work closely with the owners uh, and because they are the owners of the facilities and we are the operators of the, those properties. And we were able to gain uh, so many properties uh, uh, under management during this time. As you see, uh, COVID-19 was a very, very difficult uh, um, it was a big crisis for the Japanese tourism industries, but we have had uh, um, other uh, crises in the past. Uh, once in probably five or six years, uh, we had in 2011, we have a big earthquake and the financial crisis in 2008. And, uh, and so we were able to overcome those uh, um, 
crisis uh, in, in the past. And, and really, the experience really helped me to overcome this COVID-19 situation, uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, as uh, mentioned, uh, we have an opportunity to read now, Real Estate Investment Trust. Uh, we created this in 2013, um, thinking uh, we needed or we wanted more stable owner, stable uh, investor in a real estate or, or resorts and hotels and, and onsen yukans. Um, uh, until the uh, 2010 or 20, uh, 2009, or this financial crisis, Lehman shock period, the owners and developers we were dealing with was uh, they, they purchased cheaper, inexpensive, uh, ch cheaper uh, properties and asked us to um, improve the operations or performance. And once we, um, once those facilities start making uh, good profits, they sell to the other owners to, to, to realize the capital gain of the uh, real estate. Um, but that, that is uh, natural and, and okay, but uh, it really uh, creates some problems for us. It, it really depending on the next owner's uh, uh, policy or uh, vision, uh, our role uh, could, could change. So we wanted to have more stable owners who can uh, hold and enjoy this stable income cash flow coming from this real estate. That's why we created this Hoshino Resort Lead. We are closely working with them and uh, we are growing uh, their asset uh, over time. So this is uh, how we uh, were able to grow this Hoshino Resort Lead asset base. It is a, a very, very uh, uh, good time for us in the last uh, 10, 10 years. So we have a 46 properties under management, including one in Hawaii, Waikiki Beach. Uh, uh, as, as introduced, we do have five, uh, five different uh, uh, smaller uh, sub brand, uh, Hoshinoya luxury uh, category and the Kai, the Onsen Ryokan brand. Uh, I'm originally from this uh, type of facilities in my family business. Arizona Western Style Resort, uh, Omo is a city hotels and, and Bib is a, a new chain uh, targeting a younger generations in Japan. There are so many um, very unique facilities. They are so unique that uh, they don't really belong to any of these five uh, sub brands uh, under management. So they are, they do have still uh, independent names and uh, operated under uh, the original names. So let me um, explain, uh, spend the rest of the time how we are coping with this uh, COVID-19 crisis uh, this time from, uh, it really started uh, March of uh, 2020 uh, last year. Uh, so, so when we enter this, uh, realize that this is a um, big crisis for us, uh, the early 2020, uh, what we quickly did was to reorganize uh, the, our priority. We totally changed the priorities of uh, companies. We, um, and this is very, very important under the crisis management uh, situations. Uh, uh, the organization uh, of the Hoshino Resorts, uh, customer satisfaction is always a top priority. And uh, brand management is always a, has been a very, very important priority for us when we do uh, uh, the promotions and everything. But we, uh, during this crisis period, we need to change the priorities. We we lowered those uh, uh, customer satisfactions and uh, brand management and all these uh, long-term uh, investment uh, projects where um, we postponed them. And what we did is uh, uh, cash holding is very, very important during this period. Um, cash coming in actually stopped during the April and uh, May of 2020. 90% of the demand actually disappeared suddenly uh, due to this COVID-19 uh, lockdown in Tokyo and almost all, all uh, areas in Japan. Uh, so we, we, we should not really um, manage our cash uh, in a regular basis. We, what we did is we stopped paying any uh, bills uh, during this time. Uh, 
uh, maintaining the cash level in, in a bank account is, is so important to, 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 to survive for these uh, companies. So uh, uh, incoming cash is stopped. So we have to stop the outgoing cash uh, for the moment. Uh, we, we start negotiating with all these uh, uh, people we are supposed to pay. Uh, but but this, this has been uh, so important uh, for the last uh, one year, especially the April and May and June period of the uh, 2020. Uh, we also uh, set the policy that we maintain all human resources uh, and we, we, over, we overcome this problem together. Uh, and, and this is because not only uh, we wanted to maintain them, but also it's, it's so important for the company uh, uh, after the COVID-19 problem, this this problem, this crisis will be over. Uh, it takes a long time, but it, it crashes over in one or two or three years. What I have been doing for the last uh, 30 years is uh, really the recruiting a, a good human resource and uh, um, and grow them, uh, uh, grow the company with them, and they are so important asset for the company. We don't own asset, owners and developers own the physical asset of the properties. But what we have uh, as a, uh, the asset of the um, company is a human resource. So we have to maintain them so that we can quickly recover from this uh, uh, once this crisis is over. Uh, that's why we decided to maintain uh, all the human resources we have in, in a company. The third one is again, the, we change the priority of this, the elements that we usually uh, consider very important for the companies. And this is also important. Uh, under the crisis management situation, uh, we need to set what we should sacrifice during this period. Uh, once that is uh, agreed and, and, and gratified, the, uh, our staff can make a judgment by themselves. Uh, we, we should sacrifice this and, and, and take this, take, take cash. Uh, that, that's the, uh, something we did very quickly uh, during the April and, and May period. Uh, we also came up with the 18 month, 18 month uh, survival plan. Uh, I thought this will continue uh, for uh, one or two or maybe three years. Um, but three year survival plan was very difficult to come up with. It's, it's so long and, and uh, it's so difficult to predict what would happen in two years from, from the, uh, then. So what we did is 18 months it was a reasonable time for us to, to plan our uh, cash and, and also the uh, of the business, so we came up with the 18 months survival plan. This is the uh, end of a uh, uh, guess I had at that time, April 4th of 2020. I 90% of the demand disappeared, so we were all in panic, and, and, and employees and the staff of my company was so, so worried about the future of the, of the company and the business. But uh, we have to find how we can um, gain the revenue during this 18 months period. It, it, it was uh, um, almost only 10% of the regular time during the April or May, but we will probably uh, have a chance to gain more revenue during this. It's, it's not gonna be a hundred percent, but it, it can be 60% uh, or 70% or 80%. We have to come up with a plan to survive uh, the 40% minus uh, regular year uh, during this period. So what we predicted is, is we, I look at the, uh, uh, the pandemic situation in the past, like a hundred years ago, um, uh, it actually came like a waves. So we, we predicted that uh, this uh, uh, lockdown will uh, have, have an effect of the uh, reducing the uh, infection cases in, in two or three months and the domestic demand will probably come back um, not fully but uh, to some level and that, that's the uh, uh, this is a diagram to show that and once this uh, lockdown is over in two or three months uh, we will start targeting those domestic market so that we can gain some revenue uh, during this period the we uh, fortunately 
uh, we have a huge domestic uh, Japanese tourism demand uh, in, in Japan. Uh, as you see, 85% uh, of the total tourism consumption uh, is, is a domestic market. Domestic market is the Japanese people living in Japan uh, visiting uh, destinations uh, all over Japan. Um, and, and only 15% uh, is uh, uh, inbound, inbound is the foreign visitors to Japan. And big market is uh, outbound market. The J people living in Japan going to Hawaii or United States or Europe or Australia. And uh, I would say about 30, uh, um, I would say 10% of the total uh, tourism consumption is probably outbound market. And the outbound is actually coming back uh, during this period. Uh, they cannot really uh, go overseas. Uh, so inbound disappeared, but outbound is, is offset uh, some uh, of this uh, disappeared uh, inbound uh, consumption. So actually we have a huge potential um, to gain the enough revenue for us to survive uh, during eight month, 18 months uh, period. Uh, this is the base of a uh, um, uh, plan. So I started uh, communicating very frequently with the uh, employees uh, to, to explain, uh, you know, I, I cannot say we are okay uh, because uh, uh, the, everybody knows that uh, this is a crisis situation, but I can tell them this is that the best, we, uh, best plan uh, we can come up with to, to survive. And, and these are the list of the things we have to do during this period. And, and, and you, your role is, is to, to take this list and, and, and perform. And that's, that was uh, very important. Uh, everybody was very worried in uh, April and May of 2020, but once they understand the plan and once they know that the list of the things they should be doing during, during this period, um, our uh, you know, concern is, is actually less. And uh, the team was uh, very, very energetic uh, um, in May and June of 2020 uh, to overcome this situation. So our target is this. So when the lockdown of the, um, the first lockdown during the April and May is over in, 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 in first week of June, what I did was uh, market research. I took the 20,000 uh, samples from Tokyo and uh, we did the uh, marketing research. This was a, a very uh, difficult decision to make because uh, it, it costs some money uh, for us and we were trying to save um, as much as we can. Uh, so uh, it was a very difficult decision, but I think we needed to know uh, how market is feeling about the traveling uh, during this uh, pandemic period. So I did this uh, research and it was very, very useful. It gave us a useful information, uh, especially the 31%. Uh, they were not sure about the, you know, going or traveling uh, or taking a vacation. Uh, during this COVID-19 situation. So our target, we, we, we targeted this 31%. The 42% is, is going anyway. So uh, we need to convince the 30% that um, it's, it's okay, or it's actually safe now because we are prepared to welcome the guests in a safe situation. Uh, so what we did is uh, we came up with the uh, number of uh, uh, actions to, to, to make our uh, guests stay more safe and, and they can feel very safe about uh, 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 coming to us and uh, staying with us. And, and we actually send this information to our customers and repeaters and, and to the market and uh, to, to target that 31% portion of this market. Uh, we make sure that uh, um, this is public bathing areas and public pool areas and, and don't get too crowded. Uh, we give the, uh, we come up with the, the new system to uh, show them how crowded it is right now at this time. So say they, before they come to the pool areas or bathing areas, they can check the uh, level of uh, the crowd. 
um, before they leave their rooms so that they can feel more safe. Uh, and we also can avoid the uh, too much crowd in those public areas. Uh, buffet was a big issue for us. Uh, we try to uh, set the new uh, very strict standards uh, so that the guests can uh, actually uh, enjoy and relax and, and feel safe uh, when they dine. And we have been doing, um, this is a very unique system for Hoshino Resort. We are asking the customer satisfaction uh, survey, everyone uh, who, who stays at the uh, resorts about the 25 to 30 percent return from this uh, uh, from our guests uh, this enough gaining enough sample is so important in this customer satisfaction survey uh, most hotel chains don't get uh, enough uh, um, samples and they make judgment uh, with the uh, uh, very small samples and, and I think it does, that that could mislead the uh, the, the management so we, we did have this uh, uh, very um, strong uh, method of uh, gaining a customer voice uh, to our management and to our staff. So we added this COVID-19, uh, the evaluation of this COVID-19 actions taken by Hoshino Resort properties and uh, see how they feel. Um, uh, this is, we started this in, in June and July and uh, it has been, giving us a very important information for us and uh, how they uh, you know how they decide uh, the properties they stay uh, during this pandemic period and also they give us what they are satisfied about uh, the, the actions we take uh, for, for this COVID-19 and what they are not really satisfied uh, about the actions we are taking or things are happening in Japan like uh, um, when they are taking uh, elevators, uh, some other guests coming to the elevators without the masks, and they are very worried or they have concerns and they, uh, it's not a complaint to our, our staff, but that was the, um, the problem for our guests. So we make sure that the all guests are wearing masks when they enter the elevators. And, and that, th those are the items we uh, tackle and, and solved one by one during the summer of the 2020. So the people, are, uh, our guests are feel more safe and, and they co feel comfortable uh, staying with us this pandemic period. And those informations are sent to other guests by SNS and uh, uh, um, all these uh, uh, medias and that will help us gain more revenue during the autumn time, like September, October, November, and so on. And another uh, thing we did was the micro tourism market. We, we target this market. The biggest concern the guests had was the, um, during this pandemic period, uh, trains and, and airline companies refuse the customers when they have a fever. So that was a big concern for the guests, like uh, taking a ch children to the Hokkaido uh, and, and enjoy the vacation, but during the uh, vacation time when their children have fever and they want to come back to Tokyo, uh, they cannot take uh, airplanes and, and trains also refuse to, to, to have them. Uh, so uh, that was a big concern for them. So we targeted the people who are around our facilities uh, one or two hours drive from their home. Uh, this was a, a very, very important market for us uh, because uh, when they have a problem at the facilities, like uh, uh, children having a fever or uh, uh, not good, they just drive back to their home and, and go to the uh, home doctors uh, uh, the following day. So this really, uh, uh, you know, eliminate a lot of the concerns they had during this pandemic period. So we targeted this micro tourism market uh, heavily during this period. The problem of this micro tourism market is they, they do have a very different needs from the other people, like uh, people from Tokyo, they want to experience a local uh, food, but local food is very regular food for them and it's nothing special. Uh, we do have a lot of different uh, services to target uh, uh, international travelers, but they're not there. So we needed to really change the contents of a service. 
The microtourism market is very stable, even though the Tokyo area is locked down, but the microtourism market is, is still alive and, and they can be even active during this period. Uh, we changed again the, the services uh, to target the microtourism uh, market. This bus actually was running uh, uh, in Tokyo uh, for uh, welcoming uh, inbound people like uh, uh, foreigners, uh, show them around in Kyoto and Tokyo. But those buses were, uh, didn't have any business during this time because they, they lost the uh, uh, inbound market in Tokyo. So uh, we worked with this bus company or tour company and bring them to this uh, uh, local areas and uh, provide this special moment for uh, uh, local guests, the microtourism market. And, they were, and that's how we changed the, the service contents during this, uh, uh, this time. Uh, the food menu, we, we change so that the local market can enjoy. Uh, we have to make it special for, for them. A um, lot of the festivals and uh, uh, events during the summertime were canceled, but we, we, we made it very small and, and had it in, in locans and resorts. And so that uh, they were, were uh, the local people were not able to participate in a big scale in, in, in like regular years, but they can enjoy some at the resorts and hotels. And uh, they were, uh, so this is uh, the result of this is uh, this is a to Tokyo was very difficult because the inbound was 80%. But as you see, the micro tourism market really helped us to gain some revenue during the 2020, summer of 2020. In some other resorts like Kyoto, the inbound was a 50%. We, we lost that, foreign, we, we lost the foreigners, but the, we gained a 40% uh, option from the micro tourism, the, the local people. Uh, the revenue of the August, 2020 was very close to uh, 2019 regular year performance. It's about 90% uh, uh, occupancy. Uh, in some more local uh, onsen ryokans, hot spring resorts, 70% uh, was a micro tourism market. We actually had more revenue in, in August of 2020 than 2019. The same in other onsen ryokans or more remote areas in, in Japan. So what I'd like to emphasize in the crest management is uh, uh, we need to, uh, we have a very strict cost cost saving rules, uh, cost saving decisions. Uh, we made a very difficult decisions uh, in, in that, but at the same time, we, when you have um, like an 18 month survival plan, you have to spend enough resource uh, to, to make it really work uh, for the organization. And that's what we did. We did uh, market research uh, for this, this period. And we actually invested in, in um, to, to change the service contents and the menu contents. And we asked the bus company to bring their special bus to the, uh, those local areas during this time. Well, this is a result of this uh, pandemic period uh, uh, reservation. Uh, so this is a number of uh, reservations coming every day. So I counted from the uh, April, uh, March 1st of last year to the, about for, for about the one year period time. As you see it, blue is a reservation coming in, uh, yellow is uh, cancellations. Uh, it, it comes like a, a wave shape. Uh, so when this is a gray is a, a number of uh, COVID-19 infection cases. So the people uh, market is actually looking at the um, infection case numbers and they are very, very sensitive to that. So when the infection case is going down, the coming reservation goes up. And uh, when infection starts rising again, uh, coming reservation goes down. It's, it's very strong correlation between them. But it was, it was true that uh, um, the domestic market comes back during the waves. And that really uh, um, targeting that market was very important. And uh, in order to target that market, we needed to make some changes uh, to do so. That was the um, what we did during this uh, uh, one month. As you see, uh, it's not really over yet. 
uh, we are still in, uh, in the middle of the pandemic uh, time. Uh, this time uh, it's taking more uh, actually time to, to finish this uh, uh, third uh, lockdown period uh, in, in Japan. Uh, but I'm very, very optimistic uh, because due to the experience we had uh, last year, I think this will probably over sometime in, in April and May, and uh, uh, we were probably able to gain uh, some revenue during the uh, summer period. So the, let, let me uh, just uh, at the end of my presentation, I like to uh, uh, show this onsen ryokan uh, photos uh, because I like you to know it. Uh, it is a Japanese uh, culture theme park uh, type of hotel in Japan, very unique in the world. Uh, Japanese design, cuisine, and onsen experience and culture experience. And, and I, I've been getting so much um, attention from the international actually travelers uh, uh, for, for this uh, product and, and services. And we are now thinking of uh, taking this uh, concept to the United States, uh, for example. Uh, in the United States, there are 1,200 hot spring areas in, in, in your country, uh, but there's no one true onsen ryokan in the United States. And I know that the uh, people in your country are enjoying, uh, can enjoy onsen ryokan. So uh, we, uh, our team is now looking for the uh, opportunity to have this product uh, in, in your country. So if you have any uh, people who have uh, natural hot spring resource and looking for the uh, new hotel products to build, uh, please, please let us know. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this concludes my uh, uh, presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hoshino. That was um, really fascinating. And uh, I, I, I felt like I learned a lot. And I, I, I'm very impressed at how you uh, were able to develop an 18 month plan in the face of what must have been an incredibly difficult uh, past uh, 12 months or, or more at this point. Um, I want to start our question and answer session. Um, and I appreciate that you've uh, graciously agreed to, to take questions from uh, from us and, and from the audience. Um, well, I'm going to kick it off with um, a Columbia Business School student, uh, Shunsuke Kawabe, um, who's going to uh, ask the first uh, question. Uh, Kawabe-san? Hi. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you for a great presentation and thank you for having me today. It's so exciting. Uh, my question is about technology. So technology such as uh, smart devices, like smartphone and AI have an impact on various industry like uh, FinTech and Medotech, medical technology. Uh, how do you think uh, Hoshino Resort will utilize technology in the future after the COVID? The, uh, the ease of access, ease of access meaning the, uh, we, we, we are using the technology to make uh, our customers uh, feel more easy uh, to make reservations uh, with us. Um, that, that has been very, very uh, important topic in our industries. All these international hotel chains uh, are investing in, in that field. They do have a membership program and, and so on. But we, uh, we, we like to utilize the, um, our future technology to uh, uh, also uh, may, make it easy for our customers to make reservations with us. One, one areas that we are very different from other hotel chains is uh, we, our resorts are not necessarily located in, in a famous destinations or famous cities. All these international hotel chains have a, usually go to and, and operate in, in a famous destination areas or cities. Uh, so what we have to do is instead of uh, asking a customers where want they want to go, uh, we have to ask them what kind of experience they want to have in the next vacation time. And, and we recommend, we suggest the uh, locations they can, they should actually go 
to to really um, uh, realize what they uh, how how they want to stay. So that that is the areas we are uh, investing right now. Um, you know, deciding the properties, not not from the lo location uh, they want, uh, they come up with, but also um, but but the experience they want to have. Uh, that that is a unique approach that we are taking, and, and we are using the uh, smartphone and and, and homepage uh, to uh, to to come up with that uh, the method. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, thanks very much. I, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to start with a question from the uh, the floor. That was something uh, that was raised, um, and it was a question that I was also interested in. Um, I was particularly interested in in your discussion of how you uh, switched from I, I forget the exact words you used, but from you know general tourist to local uh, local mm, mi micro tourism. Uh, yes, micro tourism. That was the phrase. Mm, that was mm. the word you used. Um, and actually, uh, we have a question from uh, Taisuke Sasanuma, um, mm. who is wondering uh, about a point that I was interested in as well, which is uh, presumably, you know, when your brand is a very high end brand, uh, lots of lovely properties. Um, when you switch to micro tourism, you know, those are many of your, your properties are at very high price points. Um, mm. You know, how do you encourage people to come? Did you have to offer discounts? I guess kind of how, how did you handle the pricing strategy for that? Uh, is that uh, we maintain the uh, uh, price level pretty high. Uh, the, 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 there are a number of reasons to, to, uh, to justify that. Uh, the only reasons that the demand is, is, is low is, 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 is COVID-19 concern, not really the pricing. So the demand is low, but when you, when you look at the, each customers, uh, they are willing to pay uh, uh, actually high, a reasonable price uh, for their experience. So what they want us to do is instead of lowering the price, they want us to uh, take actions to, to make the properties safer for them. So we are spending um, actually quite a lot of money uh, to, to make it uh, rea uh, realize that the safe environment at the, uh, the resorts or safer environment uh, that they can feel. Uh, so we didn't really um, uh, lower the price. Uh, it was okay to have a lower occupancy during this period. We, the, the owners and investors uh, didn't really expect the you know, normal return from the properties. Uh, they, they, the best they ask us to is, is to, to uh, you know, not losing the money from doing this period. And in order for us to achieve it, uh, we, we definitely needed to uh, maintain the price level uh, in norm, norm, normal time. So, so that, so, that so, was a decision so, we made. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh. I see, I see, interesting, interesting. And, and, and so, even the local, the microtourism market, uh, th there are so many, uh, th th they were willing to pay. And, and also there was an outbound market in the local uh, people, they were, going abroad and spending a summer in Hawaii and Australia. And, and those people are very, very, uh, you know, they, they can spend money and they're willing to spend money. So we, we targeted the micro tourism, but at the same time, they, they are not really uh, price conscious people. I see. I mean, I, actually that raises a question about, you know, the, the people traveling abroad and, and now we're moving to a situation, you know, hope, mm. hopefully in, I don't know what your forecast is, but six months, nine months, um, when travel again is going to become broadly possible. Um, one of the questions that also come, comes from the floor, floor and is also a question that I was interested in is um, predominantly right now you're a you're a Japanese brand. Most of mm. your properties are located yes. in, in, in Japan. Um, although you mentioned that you're thinking about, you know, globalizing and, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought it was very interesting what you're saying about uh, developing Ryukan in, in the United States and, and, mm. and how that would work. Uh, but it might be something very interesting. What do you see as the challenges, the principal challenges you face in trying to move abroad and, uh, and establish, you know, comparable properties in other countries. Mm. 
Mm, right. The, um, the, the biggest uh, problem for us is, or challenge for us is uh, we, we have a quite uh, um, high brand awareness in Japan, uh, but we don't have that in, in the US and EU. Uh, we do have a, a, a very high uh, brand awareness in Taiwan and China and actually Asia. Uh, however, we haven't uh, uh, established any um, brand in, in other parts of the world. And that's why I think we have to uh, go with the onsen ryokan concept, uh, Japanese, traditional Japanese uh, and hospital resort. Uh, we have to, we, we can't go to the United States and, and start managing the Western style hotel. Uh, that, that's not gonna uh, work for us. Uh, we have to have a, a very unique uh, culture products uh, if, if somebody, uh, if we are managing the uh, traditional Japanese onsen yokan, that's very natural for the customers. Uh, they probably think that uh, uh, Japanese traditional hot spring resort should be run by a uh, professional, who, 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 which is a, a Japanese operator. So that, that's the kind of uh, um, uh, strategy we have to take uh, when we go abroad. Uh, we open one, uh, Japanese traditional uh, onsen ryokans in Taiwan, and that, that has been very, very successful. Uh, Taiwan people like uh, Japanese onsen ryokans, they travel to Japan and enjoy, but now we have one facility inside Taiwan and it has been very, very uh, popular uh, since the opening. Uh, we, we like to take the same approach when we go outside of Japan. We like to start with the uh, Japanese onsen ryokans, uh, because that, that's our specialty. So, so do you see yourself first spreading into Asia and then into America and, and, and the West, or do you think both will happen roughly right. the same uh, well, I, I kind of uh, like to go to the uh, United States as quickly as possible, uh, yes. Um, the one, one reason is uh, uh, the, your country, uh, the cu customers, uh, uh, understand the Asia culture, they're so like a sushi. They, when I was at the um, graduate school in the United States, my, my classmates didn't have a raw fish at all. They, they were not able to eat raw fish. But now you have so many sushi restaurants in all over the United States. And uh, uh, you have a very, very, uh, now understanding the quality of the Japanese culture and uh, the value of the Japanese culture very high. So the onsen is, is uh, probably, the, I wanted to make it a second uh, kind of wave of the Japanese culture coming to the United States uh, next to the sushi. Uh, that, that's the, um, what we are planning or what we dream about. One of the wonderful things about organizing these, uh, these events is that um, uh, our, very often our, our speakers uh, sometimes um, end up back in, our, in, in, in the audience. And I wanted to ask another question from uh, Yoriko uh, Suzuki, who is a former speaker uh, at, at one of our events. And she's now asking a question about, uh, for, for you. And her question is a very interesting and important one, which is, you know, I'm sure one of the challenges, so, so you talked a lot about the challenges of um, you know, you know, staying open and keeping the place, mm -hmm. the, the 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 facilities mm -hmm. safe for your customers, and making them comfortable. Um, but she's interested also in um, um, kind of the 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 tension between opening the place and keeping it safe for your staff mm -hmm. and making mm -hmm. sure that your staff also mm -hmm. were were feeling you know comfortable. And, and certainly in the United States, there have been issues with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, businesses where, you know, customers were not being safe and then mm -hmm. in, in some sense endangering staff mm -hmm. uh, there. And, and, and so I guess a question is, um, how, did you, how did you manage that? How did you manage mm -hmm. kind of concerns about keeping uh, businesses open and right. keeping people mm -hmm. having jobs and also making sure that everybody was, was mm -hmm. safe? Um, we, we, 
the our, our staff and employees didn't uh, uh, they, they uh, actually had some concerns about the uh, the you know infecting uh, this uh, covid-19 virus uh, in, in, in work situations but uh, their co ma main concern was the uh, whether or not they lose their jobs so the maintaining operations was uh, um, well received by our employees in april and may and, and june we try to uh, open uh, as, as much as we can. Um, the biggest challenge we had was from the local communities. Uh, they know that we are targeting the, you know, the people from Tokyo or people from Osaka, big cities. And, and pandemic was, uh, um, infection cases were, were rising in those uh, big cities. And uh, they, they, they criticized us for uh, bringing the people from those cities. Uh, you know, bringing the virus from the cities. And, and, and that was a big challenge we, we, we had. Uh, in some local small island of Okinawa, in Taketomi Island, we have a very important uh, uh, Oshinoya operations in Island Tab. The population is only 400. There's no clinic in, in all island. Uh, so because of the situation they had and, and the pressure from the local people, we closed the resort during the uh, April, May, and June. Uh, so, the, so, so we made a judgment uh, uh, one, one by one uh, in, in those situations we needed to close, but we, we, we tried to uh, maintain the operation uh, as, as, as much as we can. Let, let me, let me I'm, I'm gonna turn the discussion a bit um, back to Columbia and, and your business. So, so as you know, Columbia is a leading business school and uh, we have a lot of students oh. who are from family businesses and uh, are interested in either in, oh. you know, joining public or, or family businesses. Um, and um, you know, we, we offer at Columbia even programs on, on how to run family businesses, right? Obviously, one of the, the, the strengths of, of Hoshino is that uh, Hoshino Resorts is that um, you know you've got this strong tradition. You mentioned the 107 year history. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you're now the third generation of of, uh, of family uh, owners. Um, going forward, how do you think about the future? Do you do you see that Hoshino will just continue as a family venture, uh, as a more general? Uh, business um, and um, kind of what kind of what's your your plan? Not eighteen months, but maybe eighteen years or one hundred eighty <laughs> years <laughs> uh, going into the future. The the family uh, the family business management has been um, you know method uh, to 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 manage the family business has been growing very very rapidly in the last i think uh, 10 or 20 years when i succeeded uh, the business from my father there was no you know textbook uh, or no uh, method uh, established in in the business school or but there are so many family business uh, um, uh, academic approach in the united states in europe and, and in, in japan so uh, i'm i'm uh, trying to learn uh, more about it uh, so that uh, what we sh sh should be in, in a 10 or 20 years from now. The, the scale of the business in a company is, is, is very different from the scale I, I succeeded. Uh, next generations, for next generations, it might be very difficult to take over the, the whole thing uh, in, in short period of time. It, it's, it's so um, um, diversified and, and so, uh, so so many properties they, they, they have to manage um, in the future. So I, I think we our management style has to change. Uh, whether or not uh, uh, we go public or we maintain a family is it, it, uh, it, not a decision of our organization it, it, style. It is uh, if we need a capital for, for our growth, we might go public. Uh, but at, at this time, at, at this point, we uh, don't need really a big capital uh, for us. So we, we try to maintain uh, in a family uh, style uh, as long as we, 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 we can. But again, the, um, for the next generations, uh, it, it, is it is more difficult to take over uh, and, and understand the business. Uh, uh, it's, 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 we have a 4,000 employee company. 
so the management style has to uh, probably change in the future. It's more. And, and I wanna I wanna also just turn the discussion a bit um, to you know some of the big news that's 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 uh, you know recent news about the Olympics. Um, mm. And in particular, you know, Japan postponed the Olympics the first time, and now it looks like, you know, foreigners are not going to be coming. Um, and I guess one of the questions is, uh, obviously, that's a big blow to the tourism industry. Right. In Japan. And, uh, you know, it looks like uh, there's going to be two bad summers of tourism at this point. Um, how do you think this is going to affect the whole tourism business in Japan? So, mm -hmm. you know, is it going to be something that, um, you know, two years from now, if I go back to Japan, I will go back to Japan, uh, you know, that, that I just won't notice any difference? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that the business is going to fundamentally be, be, a, be changed as a result of these? Mm. I, I don't think there will be a fundamental change uh, in a business. Uh, inbound is, is uh, slowly coming back. Uh, th that's how I think. And, and when inbound uh, uh, starts coming back, outbound starts going out from this country. So the, again, the market is, is uh, probably tourism consumption market is probably stable in, in Japan um, as this pandemic is uh, uh, getting over from, from our society. Um, the Olympic is the loss of the uh, you know you know foreign audience uh, during the Olympic Olympic time is a big loss for the Tokyo uh, hotels in Tokyo. Uh, however, the uh, I was in my hometown of Karizawa during the 1998 Winter Olympics in Nagano. Uh, it is a, only a one month event, so the uh, loss of the one month is not going to be a really big loss or serious loss for the business itself. Uh, I think we should have a, a successful Olympics and uh, the audience all over the world will probably watch the games on TV or, or internet or monitors. And we should really show them the uh, culture of Japan and beauty of this uh, country uh, so that when the pandemic is over, uh, we, we can uh, motivate them to visit our country uh, and travel. And that's how we should uh, um, utilize this opportunity to have a, a, a summer Olympics uh, this year. And, and I guess, I guess, on a related point, I mean, given Japan's demography, the aging population, I mean, do you see that just bringing? So one part of your strategy seems to be to to bring Hoshino to the world, but also it seems that increasingly maybe you'll be more dependent on foreign tourists mm. going forward. Uh, is that is that also fair to say that that foreign tourism is going to be more important as a mm. revenue source in the, in the future? Yes, the for, foreign uh, travelers, uh, inbound travelers, is uh, uh, going to probably grow more in the future, especially the uh, Asian market is growing. They are now wealthy enough to travel outside their countries, um, and uh, the market size is, is, is growing and, and more and more in the future. So. Um, it is true that the uh, 50% uh, portion of this uh, uh, in inbound market will probably grow to 20 or 30 or 35, but I don't think it will go more than 50% in the next uh, uh, 30 years. Uh, again, the population of Japan is uh, declining. And ho however, uh, it is a big consumption uh, done by uh, Japanese uh, uh, people in, in Japan visiting a Japanese destinations. So the, uh, it is true that we, we should target and we should uh, focus on the attracting more inbound to our facilities and so on. But at the same time, uh, Japanese people traveling to Japanese destination is, is um, still a main target, a very important segment for us. We should not really forget uh, our important customers. Um, so we're just about out of time, but I want to allow one more question in because uh, I just saw Ayumi Wada from Toshiba just had a, uh, a question that looks really, really good. So I'm going to just uh, maybe run over by one minute. Um, and her question also was, was uh, something I'm very interested in is how, uh, how have your, you been encouraging and motivating and involving your employees 
to engage with your vision and strategy uh, during during uh, these these very tough times in Japan. Uh, yes, I, I do. Uh, even before the um, uh, this pandemic, I have been communicating with with my employees through my uh, private blog account. Uh, this private blog account is uh, uh, can, can be accessed by employees by putting their names and ID and password. Uh, so this is only an internal uh, communication method, and I communicate with them. Uh, I, I write the article uh, once in every month, and uh, sometimes uh, once in two weeks, and I explain how we, how I ski, and 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 uh, how I feel, and, and the strategy we. Think of for the next next month and next uh, next year and so on. So I actually put more articles during this uh, pandemic period, so so that they can truly understand our plan and 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 feel comfortable with with uh, uh, you know eighteen months uh, survival plan. And I also uh, been communicating closely with uh, how how it's, it's the plan is going uh, with us. We we tell them the cash level. Uh, we also, I come up with the uh, mathematical method to come up uh, to calculate the uh, survival percentage uh, during this 18 months period. And that was very, very popular article that, that I, I, I put on. Uh, 18 months survival uh, percentage actually changes every month and they can enjoy watching it and, 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 and how, how well we are performing to overcome this crisis period. Great. Well, well. I mean, there. I have to apologize to my audience. I, there yes. were so many questions. We could we could have, could have kept you here for another half hour, but I know I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, so I want to thank the audience and everyone for joining us for what was just a tremendous talk. Uh, I want to thank you so much for what was just a, a marvelous uh, discussion. Uh, learned a lot. Um, and I just want to end by once again thanking all of our corporate and individual sponsors for your support during uh, these difficult times. Uh, it was a um, uh, I was I was very touched uh, that that um, you know we have stuck with Japan and our sponsors have stuck with us, uh, and we wouldn't be it wouldn't be possible to run webinars like today. Uh, without your uh, continued uh, generosity. So thank you uh, to everyone for joining us and uh, please uh, stay safe. And to the extent you can enjoy vacations at Hoshino Resort Resorts. Thanks again, bye-bye.